Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. Welcome to Rack of the Week number five. I played this rack just a couple of days ago. I think there's a few real interesting lessons. First of all, I miss hit the break shot. Then I have to uh, put in some work to manufacture a break ball. And then there's several interesting decisions where I've got to evaluate my options on how to close out the rack. I just got back from a lesson with one of the top instructors in the country, and so my fundamentals are different. I think they're a lot better. I don't think they're ideal yet, and they're not perfect yet. Um, I felt a little bit awkward to begin with, but really started to become much more comfortable the last few days, and I think it shows in this rack. So settle in, and let's get to the rack. I've got an inside angle on a low break ball, and I believe that I was trying to just stun the cue ball to the center table. That wasn't a draw stroke, but you can see what happened with the cue ball. That's no man's land. Your first inclination might be to say, gee, what a terrible break shot. But look at the layout of the balls. The balls opened up ideally. You can't ask for much better. Now let's rewind the break shot a little bit. When my cue ball was in the center of the table, the balls had still opened nicely. Now let's watch how much the balls opened from this point to when my cue ball reached the end rail. It's not like a bunch of the balls uh, went to the side rails and rebounded back into the center of the table. No, they just moved a little bit farther. The point is, when you have a shallow angle break shot and you're just stunning the cue ball off the rack, you're not trying to blast the rack open. What's more important is controlling the cue ball. You're better off hitting it too soft than too hard. So you have a decision to make. Do you want to shoot it softly, or do you want to draw the cue ball all the way to the headrail and back down? Judging the speed for the former is not easy, and here's a couple of examples by pro player Chris Melling. First, his cue ball drifts up to the headrail just like mine. Then later in the same match, he gets the speed just right. Compare the result of each break shot and ask yourself which shot would you prefer to begin running the rack. The alternative is a full draw stroke as Thorsten Holman is known for. Notice that Thorsten has a shallow angle on a break ball that's close to the rack. Let's watch Thorsten's break in slow motion again and notice that while he has a pretty open rack at the end of the break shot, several of the balls went to the side rails and came back to the rack area. So there's a trade-off between how well the balls open and where the cue ball lands. I'm not going to say that one way of breaking the rack is better than the other. It has to do with table conditions, personal preference, how you feel you're shooting at the moment. But I might make a, another video at some time uh, discussing that subject in more detail. As it is, I have a long, difficult shot on the two ball. Why do we say it's difficult? It's not enough to just say it's a long shot. What makes the shot difficult is that the cue ball is a long distance from the object ball and therefore striking the, the object ball accurately is more difficult. Now for the game of straight pool, I'm just going to cinch this ball. I'm not going to be too concerned about position. I'm going to stay on the vertical axis of the cue ball and just make sure I make the ball. I've got several uh, shot options depending on where the cue ball lands, so I'm not too concerned about that. But I will share a tip on how to make this ball. Trust me when I tell you I've missed plenty of these shots in the past. But ask yourself, would you miss this two ball shot from here? From the red X, that's a high percentage shot. In fact, most of us would consider that a very easy shot. So the trick is give this shot just a little bit of extra time. And when you're standing upright behind the shot, visualizing it, imagine yourself shooting the two ball from that red X. Then when you get down on the shot, you'll have that feeling and that imagery to help you focus on the aiming point and pocket that ball. It can also help to use a shorter than normal backstroke and follow through and remind yourself to stay still. You should be able to cinch that ball just like this. I'm very happy to make that shot. That means the run will likely continue for another 14 balls. And the cue ball rolled farther than I would have played position for. But again, the most important thing is to cinch that ball. Now you'll notice that I've already instinctively decided to shoot the five ball, and there's several reasons for that. I could shoot the, uh, looks like the eight ball, that dark one, 
on the left side of the table as well. The first reason is that the five ball is near the pocket, so getting rid of it opens paths to that pocket for other balls later. But the primary reason is, I don't have a great break ball right now. It's possible that the nine ball could be a break ball. It's kind of far and kind of high, but it could work. But it's much more likely that one of those balls in the center of the table is going to become a break ball. So I've got a real good angle to, to pocket the five, use some left spin, and send the cue ball into those balls. And I don't want to send them in there real hard. Medium speed. Try to open those up a little bit. I think it's real likely that I hit that solid and knock the other solid to the right into a break shot. But you'll often be amazed at the types of collisions that result from gentle nudging of the balls like this that create a break shot. And the other reason that I'm not afraid to shoot this shot is I have the 10 ball as an insurance ball, uh, possibly that, that 8 ball in the corner or the other ball on the side. I, d I don't think there's a way for me to not have a shot. So it's worth running into balls at this point to see if I can make a better break ball. But the absolute worst thing you can do here is pocket the five or the eight ball and shoot a couple other balls simply because they're out in the open and you know you can make those shots. You have to have a plan. What are you trying to achieve? Because I don't have a very good, clear break ball, I'm trying to create a break ball. If it wasn't for the five ball, I would be shooting another shot to get an angle on another ball to somehow nudge one of those balls in the rack area into a break ball position. As long as I'm confident I have an insurance ball, that's my focus. So I did not hit the ball that I intended, and I created an up table ball, which is not good. I do have an insurance ball. The 10 uh, and the 4 are easy shots, so there wasn't any danger in that respect. But I did not improve the condition of the rack. I didn't make a break ball. So now I'm looking at how can I move one of those three balls into a break ball position. Now I could shoot the four ball now and nudge that solid to the left, but I could get tied up behind those balls. Uh, I could also nudge the solid ball that's closer, but that might go too high and not create a good break ball. So I decide eventually to shoot the 10 ball, and I'm going to have to use the bridge to do it. Because if I can hit that solid on the right side of the rack area, either it or the ball to the left of it could become a break ball. I feel that if I hit it full, I'll have a shot on the four or that other stripe. Or if the cue ball comes off that solid and moves up table, I'll have a shot on the nine in the side or the 11 ball somewhere. Well, I did not hit that ball as I intended, and once again, the cue ball is way up table, just like my opening shot of the rack. Definitely not ideal. I'm almost in the same position where I've got to cut that eight ball into the corner pocket, something I definitely don't want to do. The 11 ball is a little bit too low. I can't cut that in the side, so I've got to commit to shooting this 15 ball and bringing the cue ball uh, three rails around back to center table. These are fairly tight side pockets. This is not a shot you want to take on during the middle of a straight pool rack. But the important point to remember is you need to shoot for the heart of this side pocket. So often when we shoot into side pockets at an angle, we're shooting it softly and it hits the side facing and goes in. You've got to aim past that facing toward the joint between the facing and the rail uh, inside of the pocket. And that's the heart of the side pocket when you're shooting with speed. Now I've noticed real quickly that I can ease this 11 ball into the side and hit that stripe and one of those two might become a break ball and that's fortunately what happens. My insurance ball for that shot was the 9 in the side. I knew I'd also get a shot on probably this lower stripe or the 4 ball so I wasn't too concerned about that. But now the rack is what I call solved. Up to this point I've been scrambling. I've been trying to make a better break ball and shooting a couple of uh, lower probability shots. But now I have a break ball. Every ball is open. I don't have any trouble balls. Now is the time to slow down, walk around the table, take a look at what I've got, and make a plan to get on the break ball for the next rack. Making your plan for the rest of the rack and ultimately the end pattern always starts at the end. And so what I've noticed first off is that there is no 
key ball in the typical area above my break ball that I would look for a key ball into the side pocket, which means the key ball is going to be elsewhere. It's likely that one of the balls in the rack area could be a key ball. It's easy to pivot above the break shot from there or go two rails around it. The 13 in the side might possibly be a key ball. You can easily make that and bring the cue ball out to center table, or possibly the eight, maybe the one eight, would be the last two balls of the rack. The next thing I notice is that the table's unbalanced. There's seven balls on the left side of the table and two on the right, and one of those is the break shot. So I'm gonna need my cue ball over on the left side of the table to work on that. I'm going to be shooting either the seven ball or the nine ball. I choose to shoot the nine first because it's really simple two rail position over to the other side of the table. And the nine ball is a blocker. It's, it's between the break ball and the rail. It, it can be hard to get on that ball and, and maneuver back to the other side of the table. It's a really good idea to get rid of that first. So I noticed that uh, somewhere on the other side of the table, I'm gonna have a shot on the 13 or the eight or the four. I've got a really big position zone and multiple options. So I'm gonna move the cue ball over there and then decide what to do from there. Okay, this is great, but now my plan needs to get more specific. And the first thing I notice, I can shoot that 13 in the side for position on the one, but I'm probably gonna wanna go down to the head rail and, and back, and I'd rather not move the cue ball that much. The second thing I notice is the three balls in the rack area, they might look clustered to you, but to me, they're very wide open, and this is a pattern you're gonna see very often when playing straight pool, a three ball cluster like this. If I can get an angle to shoot that stripe in the bottom right corner, then the other two balls go in the left. If I shoot the solid after the stripe in the left, then the remaining solid goes in either pocket. So you have lots of options with that three ball cluster, and that's what I'm looking at. So I ultimately decide that either I'm gonna use the three higher balls, the 13, one, eight, to get on my break shot, which means I'll shoot the three balls in the rack area first, or I'll shoot the three balls in the rack area last, and I wanna get on the 13 one, eight in order to get position on those and then go to my break shot. The eight ball is the key. The eight ball is in the way of getting on the 13 ball now or getting on that stripe ball at the top of the rack right now. So I finally decide to shoot the seven ball and go two rails, and I'm trying to contact the eight ball with the cue ball. If I miss it, I'm gonna have a shot on the nine, uh, I'm sorry, the 13 in the side or the 15. If I hit it, I'm gonna have a shot on both and I can make a decision from there. So that came out perfectly. There was no way that I was not gonna get a good shot. And now I can go either way. I can shoot the 13 in the side or the 15. I decide to use the eight ball as my key ball. And so the first shot is the 15 and I wanna drift over so that I can shoot the solid ball next. Now I have another decision to make. I'm on the high side of that solid, so I'm probably gonna bump the solid below it when I shoot that solid. I can either play position to shoot the solid next and then go to the 13, or I can use the 13-1 to get position on the eight and use the remaining solid as my key ball, or use the remaining solid to get position on the eight as my key ball. So there's lots of options, but the most important thing is to commit to your decision and strive for very precise cue ball control. Here I've decided to go one, seven, eight. And so I'm going over behind the one ball to make sure I get just the right angle on that seven to get the right angle on the eight. And then again, I'm taking the time to walk over behind the seven and see exactly where I wanna be for the eight ball. Now this eight ball is not a standard or typical key ball that you see often in straight pool, but I actually have several options. I'm striving to get just below straight into this left side pocket. That's gonna make an easy shot to just draw over for my break shot. 
But if I come high above the straight into the left side pocket, I can send the cue ball one rail off the side rail and out. And if I am a little bit too low on the side pocket, I can roll forward. If I'm even lower on the shot into the side pocket, I can send the cue ball two rails up above the head rail. So the last three are not ideal. I'd rather just have the simple draw position, but there are options as long as I don't get straight in on the eight ball. Right now you see I'm exploring the possibility of just rolling forward on the eight to about here, and then I'll have two rail position out of the corner while shooting the solid into the left corner pocket. The position zone I have to aim for on that shot is a little bit too tight. So there you go, you see me returning to the idea of using the eight ball as the key ball. And let's see how that turns out. I'm in the third position zone that I mentioned. So in, I could go uh, all the way up to the head rail and down, but I'd rather not move the cue ball that much. I've got more control, I think, just rolling this forward. And so, even with all of my attention to detail, I'm still left with a shallow angle break shot just like the beginning of the rack. But this time, I get my speed control right and bring the cue ball just back to the center of the table. Now I've only got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six balls, seven balls open from the rack, but I'm really happy with this result. And the run continues. Once again, I hope you guys found that educational and informative. I know I did. Be sure to check out my book at shortstoponpool.com. And any of you VNE players, look me up in Las Vegas at the end of May, first week of June. And I will have some coupons for my book. So you Valley players can get a little discount. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Rack of the Week.